Here's some AdWords tips that I wanted to go over, uh, just kind of my experience. Uh, if you're new at this, you really are going to benefit from, you know, just hearing what other people have dealt with. That's one thing that uh, when I first got into this, I didn't have, you know, a whole lot of uh, experience from somebody that actually had been there. And that was one of the things. You make a lot of mistakes that way. And uh, especially with AdWords, things can happen that, you don't necessarily know how to deal with it. It's like all of a sudden, boom, you get slapped. And, uh, you know, you've probably heard that term. You get slapped and you don't know, what did I do wrong? Right? How did I How did I get here? So I'm just going to give you some of the things that I have dealt with with Google. No clicks or not enough clicks. So you go in, you set up a new campaign, and you're just maybe not getting any clicks or you're not getting enough clicks or you'd like to get more clicks maybe you got a real bad ad and let's just face it sometimes that even the best copywriters write a bad ad uh, sort by impressions and then evaluate so go into your campaign sort by the impressions and see which keywords are getting the, the traffic see which keywords are being searched for and that'll help you know how to better perhaps change up that uh, that ad and make it a little bit more appealing Add some keywords to your campaign. This is especially important if you're not getting enough clicks. Uh, but also, even if you're not getting any clicks at all, it just might be that the people that are looking for the keywords that you have aren't really looking for an ad. You know, maybe they're sticking to organic results. It's possible that your position is too low, and I would also include here that your bid is too low. Uh, and Usually what's going to be the case here is, in fact, if your position is too low, more than likely it's because your bid is too low. Anything less than seven, let's face it, folks, there's a really, you're not going to get many clicks at all if you get any. Four to seven is kind of the sweet spot. I really don't fight too much to stay in positions one through three uh, because the cost like is going to be a lot more. And in my opinion, my experience, the amount of traffic is not that much greater. So positions four through seven is what I shoot for. And if you go really four to six is what I like. If you go over seven, though, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to be noticed. Sad but true, the traffic just might not be there. Sometimes you find a product. It seems like a great product. It's good quality. Uh, in fact, I did one of these myself. I found a video course, uh, and for that particular niche, I thought, you know, it's kind of like a sub-niche of a greater niche, and I thought the the great niche is like, and the niche itself, like I knew had a ton of traffic, and I figured that the sub-niche would as well, but uh, as I got going in that campaign, it became evident very quickly that I had great keywords, there just was not a whole lot of traffic. Uh, because, again, we're trying to be kind of laser targeted with that. You don't want to be too broad. Um, no sales. No sales. Check your pre-sale page. Uh, it probably just isn't working. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It might just be a bad page. Maybe this is your first time around. It might just not work. That type of sales page might not work for whatever niche that is. As a matter of fact, I've got one page right now that I'm going to completely redo because I know the traffic's there. I know it's a great product. It's a great price. But the kind of pre-sale page that I've got up there is the traditional long-form sales letter. And I don't think for this industry that that works. The campaign actually is profitable right now, but it's not as profitable as I think I could get it. So I'm going to do a test and do a different kind of sales page, something a little more corporate, and we'll see what happens. Check the offer page because it might stink as well. Uh, not a whole lot that we can do about that, but at least we know what the problem is. And perhaps, you know, we can do something, maybe do a little bit more of a pre-sale before they get to the offer page. Or even go to the, you know, extreme of talking to the product owner and saying, hey, look, can we do something about that page? Uh, examine your server stats. One thing that you can find there that is a wealth of information is the actual keywords that people did search for 
and and click on your ad. For example, you might you know be paying for or bidding on ten keywords. Um, the, those keywords might trigger an ad, but that's not exactly what somebody did a search for. They might have done a search for something else, and your ad showed up. Well, it's good to know what they actually did search for, because, like, I'll just use the example. Let's say somebody is, uh, people are frequently searching for guitar training, but they're looking for free guitar training. And for whatever reason, your ad shows up there because you're bidding on guitar training, right? But for whatever reason, your ad shows up and it is appealing to them. Well, you can actually, if you find out that a lot of people who are looking for free guitar training are clicking on your ad, and then, of course, since they're looking for free training, they don't purchase, you can find out about that, and you can do an exclusion so that whenever people look for free guitar training, your ad does not show up. And I'm not saying that you always want to do that because sometimes you know, we can... Even if somebody's looking for something free, we can get them to go ahead and make a purchase. But if that's happening a lot, you do want to know about it so that you can, uh, you know, take precautionary measures. It's possible that a story just doesn't work for that type of niche and that type of product. If that's the case and the story's not working, try a review site. And a review site is where you take several products in the same niche. And, of course, you can be an affiliate for all of the products that you review on that site. But if, uh, you know, you go through and you evaluate them and you put your recommendations in a link where they can purchase. So what happens is people, they see the ad, they click on it, they're looking for something, right? And so you show them uh, five different products and they're looking at you as kind of an unbiased source right then. Uh, And I would advise you Go ahead and, you know, get those products and evaluate them. Give them an honest evaluation of what you think and don't, you know, some people will go out and just take the the best paying um, product and put that as number one. But I highly recommend that you don't do that. Be honest with them. Show them what you found with the product or products and make the recommendation. You know, give them a ranking like four stars, two stars, that kind of stuff. If you sign up for all of them, if they're all on ClickBank, it doesn't matter which one they click. This is like a, you know double your money or whatever, quadruple it because if they click on any of them, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get paid. So costly clicks. Let's say uh, my clicks are just way too high. Well, one thing you can do is lower your bid gradually, and you want to do this to test the position. It's entirely possible that you could cut your costs dramatically without, you know, if you just drop one position, in other words, uh, like maybe you're paying 50 cents a click to stay in position four, but if you, you know, were willing to go down to 25 cents a click, that might get you in position five or six. And a lot of times that's worth doing. So you drop the clicks and you test, see, see where your ad goes. And if it doesn't drop down too much, leave it there for a little while. Get your 500 clicks and see if, you know, there's an improvement because now you could very well half your, you know, I know from position one to three, the difference in those clicks and positions four through six, four through seven, the cost is totally different. So it might be more economical to just stay, you know, in position four, five or six. Um, Here's a fact. (laughs) Google does not like affiliate marketers. So that's one of the things that you're going to have to deal with. If they catch on that you're an affiliate marketer, that's why we take a lot of precautions. We try to do as best as we can to be, you know, a real website. That's why we've got all those pages. But if Google just figures out, oh, this is an affiliate marketer, there's a good chance that your prices might go up. So it's kind of the cost of doing business, you might say. If there is a sudden hike... It's possible that you've been slapped or there's some other kind of factor working in there. All of a sudden, your bids have to go up in order to even show. Delete the ad group and just start over. You can you can type in the same stuff again, but just delete the ad group 
You're keeping track of all your ads and everything, right? You're keeping track of all your keywords and all that. Just re-enter all of that stuff in a new ad group. And uh, a lot of times that will alleviate the problem. The slap. What is the Google slap? You've probably heard the term. The slap is when Google, for whatever reason, just says, okay, buddy, you got to give me $5, $10 in order for your ads to show up. Well, once that has happened, you can be sure you have been slapped. The only thing to do is delete the campaign, get a new domain, and start over completely. Redo everything. You don't need a new account, but you are going to have to blow away that domain. Um, it is basically trashed. Google says that it does not maintain a domain blacklist, but if you have been slapped, I guarantee you, you're on some kind of blacklist, and that domain is no longer going to be able to get cheap bids. So once that's happened, just forget about that domain and go out and get another one. What if your ad has been disproved? This is usually a fairly easy one, actually, because randomly... Ads will get evaluated by a human being, and if that does happen, we can just go in, delete the ad, and then resubmit it with a split test, a variation, and a lot of times that in and of itself will fly. Move your keywords in the ad to the display URL. I showed you how to do that earlier, so no real reason to uh, go through it again. If you get a final warning from Google, an email that says final warning, it is real. Take it very, very seriously. Pause your ads immediately. Pause your campaign. Stop it right then and there, and then go in and make the changes. If you get that final warning, they are not playing with you, and you could very well lose that account. For that reason, I always recommend that you have two accounts one that you can fall back on. Uh, and even if you're running both of them at the same time, that's fine. But uh, always have two. That way, if they shut down one, you can bounce over to the other one and you know just have a little bit of downtime. And by the way, right away, you want to go out and set up another one so that you always have two accounts that are live and uh, usable. Okay, your click-through rate drops. Do a search on the keyword term that you're bidding on, see if somebody copied your ad. This happens a lot. Somebody goes in and they're real lazy, right? So they just do a search on what they're doing and they see an ad and they copy the ad. Well, so then they can go in, start their campaign, use the same ad, and even they can bid a little bit more. The only thing you can really do here, and I advise you, it's going to be painful, okay? But just tough it out because people that do that, if they go in and they just copy your ad, they're probably yahoos, fly by night, they're not going to last very long. So, yeah, things might drop down for a little while, but just tough it out. Same thing really if they just outbid you. Sometimes somebody will come in there, even if they got a different ad, you know, and they'll just bid crazy amounts so that they get a really good ranking. Um, and that lasts for a little while, but the problem is, they are spending so much that they can't possibly turn a profit. So they do it for a little while just to hopefully try to get, you know, it's kind of an advanced technique to try to get better click-through, but eventually it does wear out. Things are going to kind of balance out, and we're going to see where everybody's really at. Now, what if sales drop? Some of this is kind of obvious, but believe it or not, people miss it. Check your landing page. A very common problem is your landing page goes down, whether it's your server or something just happened and you accidentally, you know, maybe you thought you made a change and you uploaded it, but you actually messed it up and, like, the page isn't there anymore or there's an error or something. Check your landing page right away because nothing worse than sending a whole bunch of traffic to a dead, you know, a 404 page. Uh, check the offer page also and ClickBank even. So a couple of other factors there that you got to take into consideration. Uh, the, the offer page, they could be down, and ClickBank itself could actually be down and unable to process payments. That does happen. If your impressions and clicks drop all of a sudden, 
then you possibly have been slapped. And you know what to do if you get slapped, right? Remember, your domain is gone, so you got to get a new one and basically just start over. And don't be scared. These kinds of things do happen. But that's what separates the men from the boys. Okay, so get in there, get started, take it seriously, and you can do this. You can be a successful affiliate marketer. That's it, basically, for this course. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is uh, this is going to get you up and running quickly. This is going to get you generating sales, actually making some money. If you do everything right here, you should get in profit. And what we're going to look at next is other ways that we can send traffic through article marketing and through forums.